thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to present uh, what we do in the journal to this uh, meeting. Okay, as we all know, accurate reporting facilitates a good assessment, uh, assessment of methodology and risk of bias. And um, this allows you to have a correct interpretation and use of results. Uh, the problem, the journal has accepted, has adopted the guidelines many years ago, but um, nothing, has, nothing was done. The authors, they would just have to fill out the checklist and indicate the numbers of the pages where each item of the consort guidelines was in the manuscript. Uh, so nobody actually was checking anything after that. And um, in the last decade, the number of, RC of studies published as RCTs uh, has increased exponentially. And uh, although it seems that um, the term in the title is catchy, um, if you look in the papers that have been published as RCTs, then you can see that a good about 30% were actually RCTs, 24% were not, and then 46% were in the middle, which means they could go either way. Uh, so we identified the issue and we decided to do something about it. And this just, it has been going on for one year, so we don't have a lot of data. Okay. And the idea was to increase awareness, educate, and assure compliance. And to, in order to increase awareness, we updated the website of the journal and we made specific, uh, com uh, sp uh, specific information in directing the authors to the concert statement guidelines. And uh, we also uh, put together a document that gives the authors uh, exact details of how they should go on about uh, submitting a manuscript, which is an RCT. And we're doing the same for systematic reviews also. Okay. And we also develop a video, that's the editor-in-chief of the journal, and he has a video also. So when the authors want to submit an RCT, they go to a specific place and they get all this information. Uh, in order to educate, we made a new evaluation form. I can't show it now, it's, it's two pages, but it's a, it's a mix of the consort guidelines and the risk of bias tool. And obviously, this, uh, this paper is a mixture of reporting quality and methodological quality. But we think it's important just to put in the points and the, uh, the reviewers go through the checklist and then they kind of educate themselves and the authors. Uh, as far as the authors, we refer them, as I said, to the consort explanation elaboration document. And we use both uh, trials and abstracts. And we give specific details, and I'll show you an example of that, of, of uh, optimal and suboptimal reporting and how they can improve that. And um, so the authors, they submit, uh, they submit the manuscript according to the guidelines. We hope that's not always the case. Uh, the editor gets the, the manuscript, and then he assigns to the Associate Editor of RCTs this paper. And then if the paper goes past uh, this stage, then we have two options. We can either send it out for review, and at the first revision stage, we can, make, we can add the comments of the uh, about compliance, or we can send it back to the authors, uh, make comments on compliance, and then they can have to submit again the paper. Okay, and this is a typical uh, uh, paper or a document the authors will receive. And this is the concert checklist. It will make specific comments for all the items. And I'm just gonna just give you a few. Just for example, this paper, we made a comment about not including a systematic review. Down here, a comment about the sample size, how they should be reported. Um, a comment about randomization, and a comment on baseline tables. And finally, a comment on effect estimates and confidence intervals, which is usually always, uh, which is often uh, suboptimally reported. Um, we don't have a lot of data, but I'll show you what we have. Okay. Uh, in the last year, we received about 20 RCTs, and seven were rejected without review, four after review, five at the revision stage, and four have been accepted. Okay. And uh, this is a table indicating which um, items are well reported and not well reported. And I don't want to go through the whole list. I just want to mention that uh, randomization is always a favorite for sub-reporting. And we did do some studies 
and we found that um, depending on the part of randomization, in, general, in dental journals, in dental specialty journals, we have uh, 9 to 30 percent uh, of good reporting. And as far as uh, confidence intervals, in, uh, in the specialty orthodontic journals, we have about 6 percent only. And in the general dental journals, we have about 12 percent of cases. Okay. So what are the pitfalls of this procedure? The authors can start filling in the blanks that has been identified in the past, or they can present, they can make up information, they can look up things up on the internet, and so forth. Uh, we can check the protocols, but you don't find any protocols in dentistry. Uh, I think what we do is we just communicate with, uh, uh, communicate with the authors and try to get the data. And uh, we need some good special dental flyers to do that. <laughs> <laughs> So, and w what are we thinking for the future? Uh, we'd like to compare the quality of reporting before and after implementing the scheme. And uh, we would like to do that for published papers and also for submissions. And see, let's say in five years, if the, new, if the newly submitted papers have better quality compared to the old ones. And um, we would like also to be able to complete the checklist online in the Elsevier system. And uh, we would like to do that for the initial submission and also for the revisions and see whether you have improvement after you make the comments to the authors. And um, we're, we're working on that to enter the information in a database and then we can move it into a stu statistical package and then we can get updated information very quickly. And finally, this is an idea to complete the puzzle, maybe make data set analysis code available. Um, the adoption of the consort guidelines, as we all know, it's easy. The implementation is difficult, it's time consuming, but worth the effort. And some final thoughts. I think we need to educate the students in order to be able to improve that. And maybe a standardized adoption and adheres across journals so they can just send the paper to us, we reject it, and they send it somewhere else. And the payoff maybe in the next generation, maybe not. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.